guys, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today. Thanks for tuning back in for another late night video here in the taco room. And man, it is freezing cold here in the taco room. It's It's been down in the single digits uh, every night the last couple uh, days here in Missouri. And the, my taco room doesn't got any heat in it. And uh, we've got a couple space heaters, but uh, Kim, my wife, has been wanting them in the house. So my taco room is about 25 degrees out here or colder. So if I start, teeth start chattering a little bit, you'll know why out here. So anyway, today I'm gonna do a video. I think I found what is the most realistic, most unbelievable looking handmade swim bait that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm gonna share it with you guys and talk a little bit about um, the handmade swim baits, give you guys a few tips on fishing. But anyway, this one I'm gonna show you guys here. Um, one of my YouTube subscribers sent, to, sent this to me, made it for me in his garage. Uh, named Rod Hallman. Appreciate it, Rod. Much very, uh, thank you very much for it. Take a look at this, guys. This is like a handmade uh, gizzard shad. I'm, I'm thinking the gizzard shad. Um, Rod said he, he doesn't sell these. He just makes them by hand. And the reason he doesn't sell them is because it takes him eight hours to make one of these things. So they just wouldn't be cost effective to make. But he was kind enough to, to send me this one here. And I can promise you guys, I'll be trying out trying this thing out when I get down to Lake Kissimmee next week for the Bassmaster Open. This thing is just unbelievable looking. Look at the attention to detail on that thing. It's got a through eye line tie here, which I've never seen before on a swim bait here. It ties to the front hook hanger here. So I haven't fished the bait yet, but I'm assuming that gives it increased action. But this thing is just, it is just unbelievable, man. I just... I can't get over how realistic this thing looks. He even said the eyes are handmade on the thing. But anyway, guys, um, again, appreciate it, Rod. I just wanted to show you guys this. And anyway, I'll talk a little bit about fishing these things. These big hand, you're starting to see a little bit of an influx in these really high dollar swim baits like this. I mean, these things right here, I, I don't know what Rod would sell this thing for if he's selling them, but there's guys that are that are paying hundreds of dollars for these things. I mean, I've I've heard some of these handmade swim baits go up for a thousand dollars. Some of them, so it's like a it's a real sort of a like a cult like following that they have a little bit, and they're very situational baits. But you see, you're seeing them surface a little bit more as far as in tournament play. I mean, if you, if you guys follow the Elite Series. One or two tournaments a year, there'll be some guy on the Elite Series that catches some big ones on it. The problem you have on a big swim bait like this is this is a big commitment for a bass. I mean, this is something that uh, they just can't come up and suck it in like a shaky head. It's, it's a major commitment to hit a bait like this. And you have to have the conditions perfectly right to get uh, the bass to hit a really big swim bait like that. And the problem you have is that very seldom in a multiple day tournament do you have those conditions day after day that will, uh, you know, allow those big ones to hit it. Most of the time I found, guys, as far as when you're wanting to fish a big swim bait, it's very weather dependent. And I have found in my own experience that you need some type of a prefrontal condition, some type of a situation where you have like a south wind, a southerly airflow a little bit warmer than average temperatures, some type of um, decent cloud cover. I prefer some type of a cloudy day. Um, and like I said, a wind of anywhere between five to 15, 15 miles an hour. You need those conditions where the bass are really aggressive in order to bite these things. Because like I said, they're just not gonna come up and hit these things if they're not super aggressive. You know, it's not gonna be something that they're gonna hit out of you know, anger or reflex or some, anything like that. They, they hit these things right here because they're feeding on them. So you have a small window when they're going to work. Also, another thing you're going to find out about these things is a lot of people think that, you know, they're going to be better in lower light conditions. And while cloudy conditions and low light levels externally are important, I have found that the best bite on these things is like, you see the air, the, my breath in here. You can see the the uh, the best bite window on these things for me is the middle of the day. Um, you know, you may think that yeah, right off the bat, you know, it's low light. They're going to bite these big swim baits. I don't get that many bites early and late in the day. It's usually right up in the middle of the day. And it's usually on a deal where you have to make a commitment to it. If you're going to catch a good bag of fish on a big swim bait like this, 
you have to put it in your hand and you have to throw it all day long because there, like I said, there's going to be little bite windows that those fish, you know, will get this thing on. And this is something, you know, when you're fishing these things, you know, you're not going to get a ton of bites on them. I mean, even something that looks like a live shad like this thing, when you're fishing a bait this big, um, you know, number one, the, the category and the class size fish that hit it um, are going to be limited. Yeah, you can catch two pounders on it. They'll bite it too. But most of the time, when you get a bite on a bait like this, it's going to be a four pound plus class fish. And another thing about it is there are certain areas of the country that normally produce better for these big swim baits. One of the things that I found out a big, about a big swim bait is you have to have a lake that has a decent population of big fish in it. So that's why gener and generally these things work better in Texas, in Florida, California, all those places that are known for big fish are known you know, for to, to be good swim bait areas. If you go to tough fisheries that aren't known for big fish or lakes that have a lot of smallmouth or spotted bass in it, you can catch some fish on them, but not nothing like you can in those areas. Like if you go down Lake Fork, uh, Clear Lake, you know, some of the Lake Okeechobee occasionally like that. But anyway, guys, that's a little bit on swim baits. Again, also throw them on heavy line. You don't want to lose one of these things if they cost 500 bucks. So you're throwing them on you know, 25 pound test, 30 pound test, floor carbon line. But again, thank you, Rod Holman, for making this bait for me. Much appreciated. Uh, it'd be really, uh, you know, cool to go down to Lake Toho and win the tournament on this thing. I've only got one of them, so I can't lose one. Um, like I said, I'll, I'm, I'm sure I'm the only one in the tournament that has them since Rod makes them by hand in his garage and doesn't sell them. But I just wanted to do a quick video on that, guys. So appreciate you tuning in. Much appreciated again. And we'll talk later. See you.